not madness. It's conversation. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Johnny Christmas. Hello, uh, Arrow. Yes. How are you doing today, Johnny? I'm doing great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. And I, I, right from the very beginning, man, it, what, a, what a brilliant name you've got. Johnny Christmas. You live with Christmas <laughs> every single day. Look who's talking, man. Your name's Arrow with an E. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's just entertainment, though. I mean, that's, that's you know, the, the real name, uh, we're not going there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm John Christmas, but you still have the Christmas in there. <laughs> that's right. Writing a book like this, I, first of all, I can really truly relate with it because my granddaughter's life changed because of swimming. So, so in reading this story, it was like I was living her life all over again. Wow, that, that that means a lot. Thanks a lot. I'm, I'm uh, it, trying to get that across. Is um is really is is a thing. So I'm I'm so glad that that came across because um, I really wanted to put the readers like right there, right in it. Well, in, you, in, the, in the feel there. You, you know, go yeah. into detail is what you do. I mean, you, you know, with the belly flop, and I mean, all the way through to where she gets on the team and everything. I mean, you take it one step at a time. I mean, are, were you associated with uh, with with swimming teams and stuff like that? Is that how you got so close? No, no. Actually, um, uh, when I was a, when I was a young person, I, I almost drowned. So I was mm-hmm. very, um, very. Um, uh, my life was very anti to water. Slowly, as I as I got older, I get closer and closer and taking in classes to to get back there. But um, but just being uh, just observing it as a, a extreme outsider, as someone who had a fear of it, made I think uh, heightened the observation of what it is and then also i had a lot of great um help from i spoke to a, a swim coach greta bond out mm. of um out of a, a town in florida she she was very generous with the time and uh and, you know gave me a, a lot of pointers and a n- nice long interview and and a competitive swimmer um who is a middle school competitive swimmer who who taught you know had uh, you know answered a bunch of my questions and and gave me the insight of what it is to be a competitive you know uh Teen girl swimmer, you know, which was which was just you know measurably helpful. To be the illustrator as well as the author of the story, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? You know, it, it's so funny. I, I've thought about that over the years, um, and it it is the word, you know, which is which is strange because um, I thought it would be the drawing, even for myself. But it always comes down to um, the word. But with with swim team, since it did, it was born out of a personal experience with almost drowning as a kid. Um, there's a scene in the book where Brie almost drowns mm-hmm. and um, where she's out of underwater. And it's almost like the book was built in two directions coming from that point in time, leading forward and leading backward, because that's kind of where the, the, the genesis of my own sort of personal mythology comes from. Everything kind of points back to that, um, that, that, that center, you know. So with Swim Team, it was very visual in that sense and then the word started to proliferate out of it so it was un, unusual in that way but um in, in most cases i do get uh, flashes of images but then the story comes to me in terms of words just like you know big soup of words and then i go in there and i have to like you know chisel away you know like michelangelo david you, know, you get a big block of marble and you're like what is this and, I, and then i you know chisel away and try and find uh, form and, and and shape and line out of it one of the one of the touching points and one of the very relatable points in the story is the way that when Bree is swimming, the voices in her head, the voices of doubt, the things that you know, the thing, the challenges and stuff like that. I I, I really think that a lot of YA readers are going to look at that, saying, "I I live this every day, where I have these voices that that that, that take me on." Yeah, I really wanted to have um and 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 at certain points to get bigger and the the, the cloud the. The, the balloons even become more stormy. Yeah. They're like storm colored even um, because, uh, you know, uh, many people I know in my life who are, are struggling with, you know, uh, negative thoughts or, or extreme rumination or anxiety and depression. A lot of these things manifest in a way that are that's almost unavoidable and in a way that's um, hard to describe to others. So I wanted to have a, a way in which to, to portray it in the book where you can see that Brie can't get away from it. Like, at one point, she has to physically push some of yeah. these out of the way just to get to her next class, you know? So um, uh, it, it, was, it was very important to me to, to kind of find a, a vehicle or, or a technique that will convey to readers just how that it's, uh, it's you know, it's just in her head, yes, but it's, that, that can mean so, everything's in our head, you know? So, um, so having, having Brie have to struggle with, with those thoughts and feelings 
to to get to the objective that she that she's laid out for herself you know getting through the school year in a successful way um i thought was um vitally important to create a graphic novel um the the reason why i can relate with this is because that's how my grandson learned how to read you you couldn't put a book in front of him and he, he would never read it but the second that we put a graphic novel in front of him all of a sudden not only did he become the reader but he's also he draws and he draws characters and he gives them stories. Is that how it happened for you as well? I think so. Yeah. I started off with like Sunday, uh, Sunday morning, like, you know, newspapers, you know, back when comics were newspapers, but, uh, but, uh, and, and, and I don't, I don't know if I was a, um, uh, I know there are a lot of reluctant readers who find their way into comics. And I don't know if that was the case with me because comics were such a part of my life from so early on that I can't even remember, but I do remember that they were, the first reading that that excited me, you know, because um, words on words on paper in terms of prose or whatever was just kind of these arcane little characters that you had to divine what they you know what they mean. And you know, being a young person without you know, uh, at least me, I didn't have a whole lot of life experience as a kid, so I didn't know like what these things were referencing to. You know, I didn't have a lot of uh, this deep inner life to to tap back into. But with comics, I can see how they felt. I know how Charlie Brown felt when Lucy yes. pulled the ball out from under him because yep. I could see his face, you know, and um, and that was that was vitally important, and that was um, I think what drew me to the medium as a young person, and I, much like your grandson, pretty soon thereafter started making my own comics and having my own little um stories and experiences that that kind of um, codified what I was feeling in the world and and put them in a, a context that I can understand. So often we think of comics as being superhero books and things like this, but in, in a really positive way, I, I believe that Brie has a superpower and it's swimming. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I, would, I would go further that, um, that uh, it's a superpower she just discovers through the book, but one of her main powers is the power to to keep trying, you know, yes. to, to iterate. Like she just continues to. Um, one of the messages I wanted to have in the book is that that you don't have to be great at a thing right off the rip. Most of us aren't, you know. Um, but every time you try a thing, you'll get a little bit better at it, or you get a little bit more familiar at it. And little by little, you can find um, that you have your own vocabulary with this thing. So you can truly get great at a thing, or you could just get comfortable at a thing, but at least it's your thing. It's not this other thing. Swimming doesn't have to be this thing outside of yourself, or being um, good at auto repair it doesn't have to be this thing that's completely arcane. Like, it's, if you're trying it and you're getting more comfortable with it, little by little, it becomes your way of uh, doing things. Like, we all have, you know, grandmother, oh, I love the way my grandmother sings. Like, she doesn't sing like Whitney Houston, but she sings like grandma, you yeah. know, and it's a very <laughs> specific way that I love, you know, because it's the way grandma sings. <laughs> and, um, and and I think that's a, an important message uh, in the book that, you know, you don't have to be a natural at anything. You just just, just get in there and, and make it your own. That's that's the way we li- we uh, live our black belt life in martial arts is the fact that, you know, I, I, I try to get those students to understand that you're going to learn more by being on the edge of the mat and not on the mat. And they go, why? Because you're going to see your mistakes in other people. And and, and that's yeah. and, and that's the one thing that Mia learned when when it came to swimming and stuff like that. Her confidence grew and, and her courage and, and, and diving in that water. And that and that's why this book is so true to my heart. Oh, man, that, that means so much, yeah. And and, and I, I've also found that I've, I've learned a lot more from my losses than from my um, from from you know um, the wins. Yep. Because when you a lot of times the, you know when you win, you think, oh great, nothing to improve here. I'm off yep. to the next thing, you know. Yep. But when you when when something goes wrong, you you have that moment of reflection, that time to look back and, and think, okay, like where did this go wrong? And you can dissect, you know, little by little. Okay, like okay, maybe I can improve a little bit here. Maybe next time I could do this this way, and and um and that's why it's so um important, and I think that's what's so great about um you know martial arts or, or swimming or any of in sport in particular, uh, it's a safe environment in which you can fail, yes, and you can learn, and you have instructors there who can go, okay, you know that thing that you did there, maybe you could do it twenty uh, percent more <laughs> yeah. this way, or you know, you know and, and it's a safe way to go out in the world and it gives you builds this confidence when you go into the world where you realize oh. When things go wrong, they don't completely fall apart, or they don't have to. You know um, that you can you can try it again, and you can try to improve and try to be better, and 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 um, you know walk with your head high and get on out there and you know fumble and you know you know, make your mistakes, but 
you know, you get back on the horse. I love it. Johnny Christmas, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Arrow, thanks for having me now, and I, I, I hope and pray that I, that I have some time with you again in the future. Abs- on this show. Absolutely. You. you be brilliant today, okay? <laughs> Thank you, sir.